Hey folks, welcome to another Water Trek 360. Today I'm going to revisit some upgrades made to Divoke equipment that I reviewed last year, as well as some of their newer gear. Most folks know I am fully sold on Divoke Sea Touch housings. That said, I called them out last year on what I considered a major defect. Let's have a quick look at that. The big ugly for me is the point of failure right here with this single knob. If you have a challenge with this screw and this clip, and for whatever reason, it falls off, right? Not only does that fall off, but your phone falls off and whatever other attachments you have. I think it's got to be looked at for the dive volt folks as an R&D opportunity that you don't tie everything to this one screw. Well, they fixed it. The good news is they have a new one-piece lens holder bracket. Let's look at some of the improvements. First, to install, loosen this screw on the bottom back of the bracket. Position the bracket over the housing and then retighten the screw with an Allen wrench. Make sure you align it properly before tightening to get a good fit. It may take several tries, so once on, I suggest just leaving it and removing the lens arm when not in use. Remember to soak the housing really well if you're going to leave the bracket on. The new bracket's a little heavier. It's up from 6.5 ounces to 7.2, but not huge, but weight adds up as we'll see shortly. Remember to adjust your pins uh, when using the macro and wide angle lenses, as I showed in my previous video, you need to ensure you are centered over the lens you choose to use. If you don't, you will get blurriness. They've enhanced the washers for the top screw and the side pins. They've provided a bag of spares with a hex wrench. Now, if the arm falls off, the primary housing attachment and anything you have on the shoe mount will stay attached. Kudos to Divolk for their redesign. They also now have a magenta filter, which is great for green water diving. They still need to look at the membrane protector. As I pointed out in my previous video, it doesn't fit properly when the lens bracket is on. I snipped out these pieces where the protector overlaps the bracket to keep it flush. For me, potential membrane issues are greatest when the housing is on a tray and then in a camera bucket or on the workbench on a dive boat. I know Dive Volk has a multifunctional protector, but this is only when the housing is not on a tray. It's a nice tool for safeguarding the housing before and after a dive, and it's on my order list. So let's look at the tray mounts. My first tray from Dive Volk was this straight handle, non-expandable tray. The dimensions are 13 and a half wide, six and a half tall with two one inch ball mounts. It has an internal 11 inch width and weighs 10.8 ounces. I didn't like that you have to take the housing off the tray to get the phone out. So I got their new one, which is what I've been using ever since. The benefits are that you can slant the housing out for easy phone retrieval and you know keep it solid. You can shorten the internal width if desired. The dimensions are basically the same except it's slightly taller at seven and a half inches and it weighs in at one pound, 3.6 ounces, about a half pound heavier. The undercarriage needs fixing. You can't mount a tripod, even theirs. I cleared this out with my Dremel so I could mount Divolk's own tripod. This configuration weighs in at 6.65 pounds. I have the Divolk housing on the bottom, my GoPro on the shoe mount on top. This was done so it fits easily in the tray, not due to any camera capability. 
I also picked up their new tripod. This weighs in at 8.4 ounces, has an optional 6 ounce weight uh, you can attach to the bottom to help stabilize it. I've used other metal tripods before and regardless of how many times I soak them, inevitably they rust out and are hard to open. I wanted one that reduces that issue and is easy to clean. The legs are malleable, they're coated in rubber, it has a tilting ball mount. I don't like the smooth egg shape weight where it's mounted. It's difficult to get off even with dry hands. You may need pliers or something if it gets salted up. It could use an extension or a flange on the end, something that you can grip to twist off. I purchased some new lights. I know Divolk has lights. They have a PV22 and an SL50. I wasn't looking at spending any more money for my recent trip, so I held off buying them until I came back. I did order the SL50, so look for a comparison video soon between my new lights and the SL50. Anyway, my new lights are heavier than I anticipated, so I needed to lighten the load. The total weight of the rig with the lights and the tripod is 7 pounds, 8.4 ounces. So, I needed some flotation. Divolt makes a float with 450 grams of buoyancy, roughly one pound of lift, but it has a length of 25.4 centimeters or 10 inches. This is too long for my personal needs. I didn't want floats longer than eight inches, nor did I want to build a rig with the big cumbersome old M formation. This is close enough to that. That configuration is fine for photographers who are taking still shots and want to set up for specific lighting. For underwater video, things change rapidly, and I wanted a compact length for wreck diving up here in the Northeast and something where I could put a lanyard around my neck so I can let go of the rig and use a line reel to get back to the anchor line and still protect my gear. So I bought these five inch floats. Unfortunately, they only had 108 grams of buoyancy. So I had to improvise. I bought some standard tube foam from a large box hardware store. It cost three bucks for six feet. Uh, for each float, I cut seven three inch pieces and attached them uh, with zip ties. Total land weight for each Float is 14 ounces, bringing my full rig on land to 8 pounds, 7.7 7 ounces. But underwater, the improved floats gave me over 5 pounds of buoyancy. Huge, huge input. Since I often use a tripod, I want this to be slightly negatively buoyant. I know many folks say you need to be neutrally buoyant, but that doesn't work if you are going to leave the camera and swim away. I need to ensure that it won't tip over in a mild current. That has happened to me before, and you get videos like this. Wait for it. All good, right? Not so fast. The floats worked well in shallow water under 30 feet. Murphy's Law, I forgot about compression. Once I got to 80 feet, probably earlier, these foam floats compressed, slipped out of the zip ties. Two things happened after that. First, I lost six pieces of this foam, which floated away, and I added more plastic to the ocean. That upset me. Second, the loss of the floats led to an immediate weight gain on one side of the rig adding several pounds to my dive weight and making it harder to control the rig. So I improvised again. I put this plastic mesh around it, put a couple extra zip ties. So now if they compress and loosen up, they won't leave. Problem solved. So the good, the bad, and the ugly. Today, I'm going to do it in reverse. Ugly. I don't really have any. The bad? New bracket takes a little longer to assemble. You have to be careful setting it up, which is why I strongly suggest just leaving it on after install. 
Dai Volk still needs to look at this membrane protector so that it is flush while the lens bracket on, is on. It's a wee bit heavy. I've seen similar trays, bigger yet lighter, that I'm looking into. If you bought their tripod thinking it could mount to their tray as I did, you were wrong. They need to look at fixing this undercarriage so that you can mount a tripod. As for the tripod, the weight's hard to get off. The legs are too malleable. They do not support a fully loaded tray, especially on land. I will only use the dive bolt tripod if I'm using the housing with no tray and no lights. The good. This is the differentiator. Dai Volk listened to their consumer. For several weeks last year, I exchanged emails with the Dai Volk developers, even submitted designs to them for a built-in lens bracket. This new bracket is an efficient compromise. Again, bravo to Dai Volk. Well, I hope you found this video useful. As usual, I do not represent any manufacturer, uh, in this case, a dive Volk. These are my opinions based on my needs and my real world usage. Do look for upcoming videos on the dive Volk and my testing of my new lights uh, in a comparison with uh, the dive Volk lights. I have rec videos in the works, 360 in the works, and I'm trying to complete part three of my series on apps that can help with underwater video while using an iPhone. The next one up is Cinema P3. There's so much going on in the dive world these days. Please have fun, stay safe, plan some new adventures. And as always, my friends, until next time, go explore, get wet.